All right, welcome everybody. This is the Impact Factor Podcast Blab and YouTube uh, video meeting. I'm Scott Patton, the Dean of Blogonomics and Podology, and joining me is Ken MacArthur and Ken Lovett. We're going to chat for a little while, and then we're going to open the phone boards, and anybody who has a question can either, uh, well, you can leave the questions now, or you can just uh, come on board, and we'll talk about it. So how are you guys doing today? Fantastic. I'm so glad to be here, Scott, and so great to have Ken Lovett here, uh, too, because uh, we're doing great stuff with the Impact Magazine. And I'm excited about all this stuff that's going on. It's kind of crazy. Cool. All right. Well, let's, Ken, let's just jump right in. Like, what's happening? Ken Lovett, what is happening with the magazine? Where are we at? Well, we're, we're approaching uh, the final cuts on the uh, magazine, doing the, the uh, content, getting final content in production, the videos, assembling the final issue, if you will, the first issue. And we hope to have that released within the next few weeks. Uh, so some editorial to do, some things like editing to do. Uh, I hope to have that done. I would say you're looking at uh, the end of this month. So let's let's call it a February one rather than a January twenty eighth uh, launch. <laughs> we we always like to do things with a one, right? That's right. Start off cool. So is it going to be an online magazine or will it be in the stores? Uh, it, it'll be uh, an online magazine. Uh, we're, we're using a, a different platform. For the initial release, we, we evaluated several, uh, but we picked one that allows us to do some really interesting things with HTML5, some animation, and, and different things that you typically see on, a, on an online, online magazine. Uh, so we're excited about that. Uh, and then, you know, in the future, we'll probably do on-demand print uh, and additional features that will be shipped out on a monthly basis for people that choose to join us as a membership group. Great. So we'll have certain information in the magazine, and we have a lot of great stuff going on. We have Russell Brunson with ClickFunnels in the first issue talking about that. We have Todd Brown from Marketing Funnels Automation uh, who talks about his funnels and how he creates those. And we have just a, a plethora of, of good content coming in for the first issue. Uh, so we're really excited. Awesome. Tell them a little bit about uh, opportunities for uh, people who are authors, uh, writers, and, and things like that. And then, of course, also we have we do have opportunities for people who really want to reach an audience that are trying to have an impact in the world. Um, so uh, there are uh, opportunities for sponsors and for advertisers in the magazine, too. So uh, there are a lot of people that can benefit from all of the stuff that we've got going on because... Uh, there's going to be a flood when everything pops on the impact project with the with the films, the live channels, everything that's coming up. Uh, we're just going to have a rush of people and we want to support those people. We really want to get uh, good ideas, good products and good services out to people. And if if uh, you're one of those people that have something to offer to people to help them make an impact, we want to be able to reach them. So. Absolutely. Uh, we, we have every, every type of opportunity within the magazine for people. If they have a product or a service or they have a story that they feel impacts people in a positive way, we don't want uh, just fly-by-night products or services. That's not who we are. That's right. not the premise that we talked about in, in the beginning, Ken. We want people that are going to help make a difference in others' lives. So if they have a product, a service, they want to talk about their book, we have opportunities for them to advertise in an advertorial format. We have full page ads. We also just take content. So if you want to talk about your projects, we'll take your articles and integrate those into the magazine. So we have a wide variety of uh, opportunities for people to get the word out about their, their products and services. So this is a question that uh, I, yeah, I feel like I have to ask, and I'm sure you have an idea. What sort of reach do you think the magazine's gonna have? What are you planning for? That, that's a really good question, and I'm not sure that we do have a grasp on exactly how many people we're going to be able to re reach. Of course, it's going to start out, you know, at, at a lower level, and then as everything, uh, you know, kicks off, uh, we're going to be reaching more and more people. So our our goal is to do coordinated launches with uh, the movies, the the uh, the magazines, the live broadcasts, the live events, all of the different things that we're doing. And, you know, when we did the last uh, big project that I did, we were able to get out to 30 million people in just 30 days. 
And this is a much, much, much bigger project. That was a 30-day project with a couple of months uh, planning in advance. This has been in the planning and the works for a couple of years now, really, or going on a year and a half now. So, um, so it's gonna it's gonna explode. I think that uh, you know this is the time to to get in. There's never gonna be uh, more opportunities for people to be in on the start of something than there are right now. And um, and it'll be a fun ride. I, I, I can pretty much guarantee that. Uh, a- absolutely. I, I'm excited by uh, the magazine and some other things that we've discussed as well. Uh, I think the magazine provides an opportunity for us to get out the word about people making a difference in other people's lives. For instance, we have a person that rode across the country on a bike with two other Boy Scouts in order to raise money for veterans. You know, he'll be featured in the magazine, Don Child. Uh, we have, you know, other people that are making a difference in people's lives. And we want those stories. We want people telling the stories about how they give back, how they make an impact in others' lives, as well as products and services that can help guide people from beginner to advanced marketing in their journey. It's all about uh, creating leveraged impact, Scott. Yeah. You know, we all have a limited amount of time. I actually went out uh, today. So we were talking about that. Uh, and I just happened to uh, to see a, a thing from the Social Security Administration on uh, on figuring your, so, you know, when you should retire based on your life expectancy today. And they have they have it down to a science. And uh, so I put my my birth date in there and they told me that I got about 19 years left. To the month, so, <laughs> so we got to get really busy. Uh, we got to get busy having impact. You know, we all got limited time and resources. So the way that we can have a bigger impact is that we use leverage, we use those tools that we have to be able to reach people as early as possible to build that momentum. That uh, you know, having a leveraged impact really makes it right. Goal. Right. Well, the magazine sounds really excited. So. Ken love it. I've got two cans here, so I have to use the last name so you know who I'm talking to. I was on a blab where there were two Scots, and the the, yeah. the moderator kept saying, "Well, Scott, what do you think of this?" And I would start talking, and then I'd realize he was meant the other Scott. So then I right. shut up, and then he meant me, and the other Scott would talk. So, so Ken Ken love it. If somebody wants to know more about uh, getting involved with the magazine, how do they get a hold of you? As uh, they can email me there. at Ken dot love it at the impact magazine.org uh, and their information, what they're interested in doing. We're looking for content providers. We're looking for uh, people to write articles, to contribute uh, editorial help. Uh, you know, anyone that wants to get involved with the magazine, contributing uh, products and services that they feel can make an impact in others' lives. We're looking for everyone to get involved so they can reach me at that email address and I'll be happy to work with anyone. Awesome. All right. So, Ken, you were telling me that uh, you were working with Ken MacArthur. You were telling me that you were working with uh, uh, what, a special effects company for the movie. So what was that like? You know, it, it, it's kind of crazy. We're, we're working on the trailer right now. So there's several things going on. We're actually casting for the film right now uh, with uh, going out, finding amazing actors. We've had our first live casting session. We're taking video submissions to kind of uh, why, you know, we've, we've had such a response in terms of the actors and the people that, that want to get involved in this. And uh, so uh, so it's, it's, uh, it's become fairly consuming just going through actors and things like that. But at the same time, uh, we've got some great help on the cinematography front uh, and one of the things that we want to do for the trailer for the film, which is one of the, the first things that's going to attract people into the film, is uh, to have a, a really interesting sequence that actually starts on the um, uh, the top of City Hall at, in Philadelphia. And if oh. you've ever seen Philadelphia, they have a, uh, a statue up in what used to be the highest, uh, the highest, um, uh, highest building in the world for about six months, I think <laughs> it made that. 
And for many years, it was the tallest building in Philadelphia. And it's still the, the, the highest um, uh, uh, masonry building in, in the world is uh, Philadelphia City Hall. And sitting up wow. on top of that is a statue of William Penn, who was the, the uh, Quaker who kind of founded Philadelphia, who was uh, given Philadelphia as an area um, as, as people came over in the 1600s, 1700s. And, um, and so we've got a dramatic scene uh, that opens up the close with somebody jumping off of the top of William uh, Penn's head <laughs> <laughs> on that statue. So that's an interesting uh, visual effect. And, and, and what we're going to do is we're working with uh, some top producers. I have a, uh, I made a, a relationship with a, one of the top uh, visual effects producers, you'd, uh, you've seen their work in, in many major uh, motion pictures. And they're in the middle of doing a startup, which has over 1,400, I think it is, 14 or 1,600 uh, visual effects artists all in one kind of a marketplace. Wow. And they're actually featuring our project um, to go out and find a visual effects supervisor for us. Uh, and it's going out in their newsletter, I think, today. So uh, it's nice to be featured in a publication like that. Uh, and I, I'm sure we'll have lots of responses of, of people that are top level that will want to be working with us on this, uh, on this project. So I'm excited about that. And we're also doing, uh, we're also doing music stuff. So I'm, I'm actually going out to my uh, research group today. We're testing two different uh, versions of the intro to the Impact Manifesto short film that's in post-production right now. That's fun too. You know, you get to, to compare different musical styles and see what people who have no clue uh, who I am or what this project is really think mm. about it. So mm. I'm, I'm hearing myself from all of the input <laughs> that I'm about to get. <laughs> Well, that's awesome. That's awesome. So you're becoming a music producer too. Is that what I'm hearing you say? Well, you know, in that in that crazy uh, far distant uh, past, you know, I was uh, in the recording studio business for many, many years. I've got a master's degree in, in music and composition. So there's all kinds of things that we bring that we didn't imagine start out life uh, you know, all the different things that we go through and you never know when they're going to come in handy. That's right. So in our next blab, you're going to have uh, Kane at Can on with us, right? <laughs> we, you never know who's going to be on with us, Scott. So uh, I, I encourage people to, you know, subscribe and stay in touch uh, and, uh, and get involved because we're sending out updates all the time. Stuff is changing every minute. And we never seem to have enough time to talk about all of it, but it's great to, uh, to be able to have all this impact going on because I know we're impacting people every day through our workshops and through the case studies we're developing for the Impact Factor movie and all of the uh, lives that we're touching, not to mention the Impact event, which is coming up in Denver, which you're going to be at, Scott. Uh, That's right. At the event, uh, April 29th through the uh, 1st of May. So we can go out with a bang on May Day. It should be an exciting event. It's going to be, it should be an exciting event. Yeah. Um, so I wanted to ask you, because, and this is, you know, I was thinking all these blockbuster movies and they have spoilers and, you know, but they also have synopsis. Like what this, what is the movie about, right? Darth Vader is going to attack Luke Skywalker or something like that. So I was wondering is there a synopsis that's spoiler free for the impact, the long movie? Well, and both of them, because you yeah. know, that's the story. Yeah. So, um, yeah, interesting. I'm, I'm not sure how much I want to talk about exactly what the synopsis is, uh, but I, but I can tell you that it's basically the feature film that we're doing is about a young uh, political operative, a young ambitious girl who is a good young woman who is um, uh, kind of rising through the ranks of the mayor's office and, and uh, making, trying to make an impact. Uh, she was inspired by her uh, city councilman father, uh, wanting to make an impact. And she's on the top when circumstances cause her to be on the bottom. And she really mm. 
it's a chance to discover the real meaning of impact. So uh, all of these projects are about impact, how we all make a difference whether we want to or not. Uh, the documentary film will actually get into how do we do that and how are people impacting people in the real world. The narrative film will tell the story of impact uh, in a very, very dramatic way and a very moving and touching way um, using uh, fictional characters, but based on uh, something that happened in real life. So uh, there's a lot of backstory to the whole thing. And the impact manifesto is specifically about how we all make a difference, whether we want to or not. And we're benefiting over 100 nonprofit organizations uh, by helping them to uh, raise funding funds and awareness for their projects uh, through that um, through that movie. So wow. that's great. Uh, so I want to sort of take over the blab for a second because uh, a couple days ago, a friend of mine from Ontario flew out to Vancouver. So we got together. We went for a little walk in the woods up to a waterfall nearby. And uh, he's going to be pushing a shopping cart from St. John's, Newfoundland, basically straight up the coast from New York and Boston and Maine, all the way across wow. Canada to Vancouver, possibly Victoria. I forget where he's ending. And it's to raise money for getting homeless youth off the streets. And he's in his, like, four, I think mid-40s, probably. He's younger than me. And um, I've known, like, and it's what's interesting about this, and what popped into me was when you talked about this gal being at the top and then dropping down, Joe was at the bottom. He was sniffing glue at 11. So you can imagine what he was like in his mm -hmm. 20s. And at some point, he was walking with sock feet down the rainy, you know, Vancouver, it just pours in, in February. And he had a little bag, paper bag full of his drugs that he just traded his brand new boots for, right? And there was some part of his brain that just says, you know, if you keep doing this, you're going to die. So he got clean and he, and he started working. He got an education, he went to college and he started working for Xerox. And he says, Scott, he says, it's amazing, you know, like... I go into this building, I, you know, I'm wearing a suit. I go into this building, I go talk to somebody, I ask them for money to buy a Xerox machine. They say, no, they don't spit in my face. They don't kick at me. They don't swear at me. I leave. He says, wow. He says, I spent 20 years going up to strangers, just like that guy, asking him for money and having them spit in my face. <laughs> Such a difference. And he built a very, very profitable company, just doing about a half a million dollars a year. And he he and I were walking another time in the woods and he says, you know, I'm gonna build my business up and in a couple of years, uh, I should have enough money, I can sell it and then I wanna be a speaker full time. And I said to him, I said, Joe, nobody wants to talk to listen to an ex-drug addict talk about how he got clean. They want to listen to how an ex-drug addict became president of a multi-million dollar mm -hmm. company. And I said, I think you can do both. And he did both. And yeah. fortunately, he became incredibly successful as a speaker. And I think it's kind of like, you know, I want to be speaking. I want to be speaking. It's this huge mountain. And he got to the top of the mountain and he realized, this is my opinion. I've never asked him this, but I think he realized that he was still him when he got there. And I think he thought he would be somehow fixed or better and yeah. went back on drugs. And within two years had lost a half a million dollar house, had lost everything back on the streets, a heroin addict. And after a couple of years of that, he cleaned himself up. So he had the rags to riches to rags to, I'm, I would say a richer riches than just the monetary riches. Right. And, um, and he said, one of these guys, like, he can make as much money as he wants, as fast as he wants. Like, he has no issue with that. But it's just kind of this up and down and up and down. So he visited me and we were talking about it because one of the things that I was there at the beginning of was when he would go into the school and he had a presentation called Don't Buy the Lie of Getting High. So I saw him in one of his first auditoriums with about 300 grade 11 and 12s listening to him. And, there, you know, not a, a pin could have dropped and you would have heard it except for his voice. It was they were all riveted on him. And so every time I tell his story, I say, yeah, like 
he's talked to 10,000 students, right? Because at that time, he would show me these, they would all go back to class and they would write him an email, right? And then I would tell that story and I'd ask him how many, oh, no, no, it's 50,000. Then it was 100,000. And so yesterday I said to him, how many? And he says, 300,000 students have heard him talk about not buying the lie, That's getting great. high. And yeah, so it's just like, and I mean, and who knew, right? He, he's been in front of the, uh, the Ontario, no, the, the Canadian police conference, right? So he gets up and there's 300 police chief in this room. He gets up, he says, bet you never thought you'd see me here. I'm one of those guys you kept throwing in and saying was hopeless. At least on this side of the microphone, right? That's, That's right. Great. That's right. And what's interesting about that story, though, is, is that we all go through those ups and downs, and we think when we're on top, we're going to be on top mm -hmm. forever. Yes. And it never yes. works out that way, you know. Uh, life is, is a series of, series of cycles, and we get to choose every single day whether we're going to or we're going to stay at our very best or we're going to uh, descend to the depths, you know, because life is hard uh, from time to time. And those choices that we make really do make a difference, not in, not just in our lives, but in the lives of thousands and thousands of people that we impact every single day. And, and if, if we can um, keep encouraging people to make those choices, uh, those better choices that really have the the, the bigger impact um, or the better impact at least, you know, and if we can help them to make those in better ways, then uh, we're doing real good in the world. You know, it makes a difference that you were there for somebody, um, you know, when they were on the top and you were there for them when they're on the bottom. You yeah. know? Um, because that's when we need right. it the most. Scott, I, I'd love to uh, be connected with the person you're talking about. I think, you know, I'm always looking for inspirational stories. We have uh, one coming up from a, a person that could barely pay his electric bill two years ago and then pulled himself up and did $2 million last year. So, you know, you know, it's nice, not just for the money, but it's nice for people that are in a situation where they feel it's hopeless. They can't see themselves getting to where someone else is and to see that you can do it. Everyone can do it. It's just a matter of applying uh, taking the right uh, direction and moving forward on a daily basis. Anyone can do it. Yeah. I'll get him your email and I'll uh, send, well, when I do that, I'll introduce the two of you. So he knows who Fantastic. you are and uh, I'm sure he'd love to, to chat. With, well, I mean, <laughs> he likes to talk and he likes to share there his message. Go. So he's going to be delighted when you, when you guys get together, right. but yeah, great. Great guy, and I'm a, I'm actually on the board of directors of his uh, charity and foundation. Have been from day one. That's so. great. Yeah, and, and the thing is, is you I guess to to add on to what Ken MacArthur said a few minutes ago is you never know what impact you're going to have on people just by being yourself, oh. right? Yeah. It's those small acts of kindness that really make the biggest difference in, our, in the world. You know, when we had our impact, our very first impact event and brought people together and asked them who was the person that had the biggest impact on their life, you know, it was all kinds of people, but the common thread was always that it was a simple word of encouragement. So, you know, we, we can all do that every single day. And if we consciously decide to do it, uh, we're going to have a positive impact right. on the world. Yeah, and if you need help making it a habit, write it down on a little post-it note, stick it up on your computer, and remind yourself every right. two minutes. Yeah. I, I did a daily challenge thing to just take a sheet of paper and put uh, plus on one side, minus on the other side, and just keep a list throughout the day of the positive impacts that you have and the negative impacts that you have. Because I think the reason that we don't realize what a big impact we have is because we don't measure it. It's not that hard to measure. It's not that hard to know. We all know when we say something mean to somebody that it's going to have an impact on that person. Mm. Uh, and you see that every single day in, in so many cases, but we slough it off. But if you actually start seeing mm -hmm. it on paper, uh, it makes a, an impact on you. And I think, you know, if you kept doing that and you were back, you know, to go back and look at those sheets afterwards, 
um, you might change something. It's absolutely actions. true. I mean, even the simplest thing is, you know, if I go to the grocery store, I always engage the checkout person, always. And if they're having a bad day, I make it more of an effort to get them to smile, engage, because I know when I leave, the rest of their day is going to be better. And when they go home, the rest of their evening with their families is, is going to be better. So just the simplest things can make a difference. Yeah. Well, what a difference it would make in the world if everyone was nice to each other when they went through the Absolutely. checkout line. You know, just that Absolutely. one thing. As a, as a former Safeway manager, he really appreciates that. That's right. That's right. <laughs> you caught me uh, on why I was that was close to my heart. Uh, you know what the other side of it is kind of how you like so you're on the you're on the one side and you're the customer uh, the other side of it is the what the the employee can do to make the customer better feel better too right it, it's a two-way street and i think sometimes we make really bad assumptions and uh, ken mccarthy you just reminded me of a time when i was a store manager at safeway and I got this call on the uh, the in in house line, phone system to come to the front because there is a customer here. She's really upset and she only wants to talk to the manager. And I said, like, what's it about? She won't tell us. So I went down and sure enough, right at the front of the store is this lady and she is furious, just furious, right? So I went up to her and I said, hi, you know, what's the problem? What can, you know? Well, actually, I think I don't think I gave her a chance to talk. No. Now I think I went up to her. I said, hi. I don't know what your problem is, but I'm going to fix it. <laughs> <laughs> and she went from, oh, and I realized in that second that she had a little right. problem and she had built it into a massive problem because she got home. I'm not happy. I'm going to go. They're going to say this. I'm going to say that. And this whole fight escalated mm -hmm. in her head. And, and it came to a crescendo when she got inside the store. Right. So as soon as I told her, and it was like, I have this, I bought the wrong pork and beans. I mean, it was so like, yeah. no, you're kidding me. That's it. You're mad about that. Yeah. I didn't say that. I yeah. just said, we're going to look after it. And she was just like, oh, thank you. What's the that, that reminds me no of, <laughs> that that reminds of David Hancock. Uh, David Hancock famously, I think, uh, instead of ask, uh, you know, answering the phone, you know, can I help you or something like that, answers his phone with, I can help. And um, and he says it has a huge impact, you know, on the on the mindset of the people that come in. Yeah, that's right. It should feel mm. good. We all can use somebody who can help. I so I have one last little phone story that you tweaked that I have to I have to tell you. It was many many years ago. I was with this gal, and someone phoned us on a Saturday morning, and I never answer the phone like this. But for some reason, I picked up the phone and I said, uh, Patton resident, no, Patton taxi service, how may I direct your call? And she goes, I'd like to talk to Kathy. So I hand the phone to Kathy. She blows up at Kathy for like, it's like five minutes. They finish their talk. She hangs up and she turns to me and she says, that's my friend who works for a telephone company. And the one thing she hates because it's bad etiquette is when someone answers the phone, how may I direct your call? It just is her hottest hot button. She says, I don't know how you knew she was calling and I don't know how you knew to say that, but you just flipped her right off. And it took me half an hour to tell her like, Scott never answers the phone like that. He was just kidding. Right. <laughs> wow. Like, Yep, small things make a big difference. <laughs> That's right. Lots of fun. All right, so we've come to kind of a, the end of the first half hour, and if you want, we can sort of open the phone. I like I could just love saying open the phone lines, right. right? I grew up with that. But if anyone's watching and they want to join us, they've got something they want to say or they want to share with Ken and Ken and Scott, go for it. And if you don't, we're going to wrap it up. I have a question. Is, uh, will there be a recording available uh, for yes. this? There is absolutely. And the uh, easiest way to get the recording, which I hate to tell you, is this link. <laughs> Just copy that link. When it, we hang up, the, the replay is here. 
Uh, but we're going to put it on our podcast and we're going to put it uh, up on YouTube as well. Ken and I will post all of that on uh, on our social media. Or yeah. Ken, Ken and I will post that all on our social media. Right. So the link that you get here, you can get to the recording. That's right. Yeah, I was going to put it in the, for those of you that don't know what a URL is and an address bar. There it is. All right. Fantastic. Hey, Debbie Gerber's here. How are you doing, <laughs> Debbie? Uh, yeah, fantastic to have everybody here. And thanks so much for supporting us. And um, if you have questions, we definitely want to answer them. And if not, we'll let uh, Scott take the rest of the day off. Yes, yeah, right. work. <laughs> big impact, happy impact on my day. That's right. <laughs> uh, thanks right. so much for your comments there. Uh, really appreciate that. Okay, Ken, tell us a little bit about the uh, impact event, and then we're going to wrap it up. All right. The impact event uh, starts out on April the 29th. It's in Denver, Colorado this year. We've got an amazing, amazing group of people that are coming to the event already. Uh, I still got a few uh, surprise announcements that are coming up um, in terms of the speakers and, and things like that. But uh, it's it's going to be pretty amazing. Already, I've announced uh, that Joel Com is going to be there. Uh, Davin Michaels is going to be there. Kathleen Gage is going to be there. Sam Crowley is going to be there. Um, Daryl Eves, the uh, YouTube expert, is going to be there. Stephen Memo, uh, performance uh, whiz, uh, he's doing amazing things. <laughs> You'll be amazed at some of the some other things that are coming up with him. Uh, Stephen Memo, I mentioned. Let's see, Rajesh Sethi. Rajesh is uh, is from Silicon Valley and doing just incredible things, uh, building startups, and he's one of the the most grateful, caring, and compassionate people that I know, and uh, people who saw him uh, present at the Impact event in Philadelphia just loved his presentation. I know you will, too, if you can make it to Denver. Um, Felicia Slattery is going to be there. Felicia, uh, for a long time, uh, did uh, emceeing at uh, JB Alert Live events, and she was part of the original Impact Action team. Uh, and she's gone on to do some amazing, amazing things, uh, really help people who want to be, become speakers and, and communicate effectively. Uh, she's going to be fantastic. It'll be great to be back with her. Um, let's see. Uh, Jeremiah uh, Desmarius is, uh, is coming. Uh, he comes from the insurance field. And if there's anybody that knows how to sell and engage audiences, it's it's Jeremiah. That's going to be a brand new uh, addition to the to the crowd. And I've also announced just yesterday. I haven't put out a huge announcement yet, but Tamara McCleary, who is a keynoter, constantly on the on the move around the the country uh, uh, with an uplifting uh, message that uh, really you know, talks about how we build our relationships in our lives as a whole and how we get balance in our lives. Uh, she's going to be at that event. I know that that's going to be really, really dynamic. I'm going to be there, and Scott's going to be there. Maybe, uh, hopefully, uh, we'll drag uh, Kim Levitt out Ken's there. I think Ken's going to be there as well. Nice. Uh, of that. So, um, and there, there are a few more surprise punches that I, I'm uh, – I'm coming uh, out with really, really soon. Uh, there's an early bird special right now that's going on that will save you $400 on a ticket. So if you get to theimpactevent.com, you can join an amazing group of uh, incredible people and have an impact, you know, maximize your success. So there you go. that's it. All right. And what's the date again, Ken? It's April 29th through May the 1st. All the details are at theimpactevent.com. And do tell us, Scott, uh, how people should get a hold of you. Okay, well, I teach people how to podcast, and I also teach people how to put together online courses. And the best place to get a hold of me, the easiest is at podcasters to say 
And really, that's the worst one because I hardly ever check my Twitter messages. Uh, but www.powerpodcasters.com would uh, be the easiest place to get a hold of me. My email's there. You can uh, send me a message and uh, be happy to help you in any way that I can. And uh, Ken, if anybody's interested in the Impact Magazine, give out your contact information it, too. Okay, it's Ken.Lovett. That's L O V E T T at the Impact Magazine.org. Uh, and you can reach me there if you're interested in contributing any content. Uh, advertising opportunities, you know, feel free to reach out and uh, I look forward to talking to each and every one of you. Plus, we have a lot of other exciting things coming up. After the magazine launched, there are a lot of exciting things coming out. And uh, Debbie just asked a question. I do want to answer this before we get off uh, the air here. Uh, asked if, uh, if she buys a ticket but can't make it. Uh, she travels so much she never knows more than a month out. Can she give it someone else to attend the event? And the answer is absolutely um, would love to have you do that if you can't make it. But we're hoping that you can be there in person. That's right. That'd be awesome. So thank you, everybody, for joining us. We really appreciate you. Really appreciate the fact that you make an impact in the, in the world. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Hey, everybody. Have a great Bye day. Now.